You know, I deleted a cut where I actually opened this by singing Looks Like We Made It by Barry Manilow. One, because it was me singing, which I, I, I actually like to karaoke quite a bit, but you know, I don't want to do that, you know, just acapella on a booktube channel. Anyhow, uh, but uh, I also am like, you know what? No one that, that watches these videos even knows who Barry Manilow is, right? Anyways, guys, let's talk about Knife of Dreams. Book 11, we made it through the slog. We've made it. We're ready to talk about what comes next, what happens in Book 11. This is Jordan's swan song. So let's talk about what I want to see now. Hey, what's up, wheelies and dark friends? Mike back again with another wish list. This time talking about book number 11, The Knife of Dreams by Robert Jordan. The final entry by Robert Jordan, by the creator in his own series. It is very, very bittersweet. Uh, I talked recently about Crossroads of Twilight and why I didn't think it was quite the disappointment that everyone had set me up for. Was it great? Of course not. But was it as bad? It Was it the freaking horror movie that everybody told me it was? Not even close. Not even close. So I feel like I'm actually entering into this next wave that everyone just has such high praise for, 11 through 14. And I, I feel like I've still got the same energy. I'm ready. I, I don't feel like I need to have a renewed energy, but I will definitely take it if this is what the series is going to offer at this point. Uh, so what I do with these wish lists, if it's the first time you've caught me, is I'll just talk about, since this is my first time going through the series, I'll talk about really kind of what I would like to see happen in the next book, even though some of them I know is ridiculous and some of them are going to be repeats that I keep saying that haven't actually happened. But I'm going to stick by them because I'm just that stubborn. Uh, I learned it from being married to a redhead. Anyhow, uh, she also is Lord Dragon, but not Aiel. I don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. All right, so let's get right into into it. And we're going to just talk about my obligatory Aes Sedai split resolution that I bring up in every one of these. I think I've been bringing these up since I first started doing this uh, before, uh, what was it? A Crown of Swords, I think was my first wish list video. And that was the first one where I mentioned, yeah, I'd like to see some resolution. Well, here we are, you know, five books later and it still hasn't happened. So um, yeah, I'm going to keep mentioning this. I feel like it's coming to a head with the whole abduction of Gawain. Uh, Gawain? Gawain? <laughs> <laughs> Egwene, I would see Egwene, Gawain. I think I got my like uh, Arthur legend mixed up into somehow. That's a neat trick. Um, yeah, so Elida has Egwene. I don't know what she's gonna do with her. I'm sure she's gonna try to put her in that like torture chair that they got or something. Like that. Was it them? Was it them that had the torture chair? I think they had the torture chair, didn't they? I forget what it's actually called. Uh, but I, I feel like that's what's what's gonna happen there, and uh, they're gonna try to. Uh, I don't know, maybe they try to steal Egwene. I don't even know. I don't know, but who knows? Maybe they actually, Egwene's actually able to get through to her and they actually come to a resolution that way. I just doubt it since Egwene was like, yo, I want Elida exiled. And um, and uh, what, Elida was all like, anyone who's met the knee to Egwene, yeah, they're bust back down to accept it. They got to earn their way back in. So I don't see these two hashing things out. I and mean, I don't really see it being um, diplomatic. I see Egwene getting thrown to either torture or a dungeon or both. Uh, so there we go. There we go. What else would I like to see? Uh, a chapter I really liked in the last one, like I said, with the White Tower stuff that really surprised me was the uh, uh, Shaidar Haram showing up. And uh, I would like to see more of this because uh, it was kind of sort of loosely revealed, I believe, in the last one that he is actually the Dark One. Um, I'm still thinking it's kind of like a Mouth of Sauron kind of thing. At least I imagine that's what it is. I just, because I feel like that's such a big reveal, if not, that people would hold Crossroads in a much higher light than they do uh, if that, that was an actual true reveal. I know that's, you know, a little sleuthing I probably shouldn't be doing, and I wouldn't have if, if, uh, if, if the book wasn't held in such low regard by the fandom. It's just something I, I I don't know. When I was making the video, I brought it up, and then I was like, well, I don't know. Wait a second. You know, he could do this, this, and this. It, it kind of makes a lot of sense. Uh, so I'd like to see some more of him. And obviously, I'd like to see, as much as I have problems with the Forsaken, Morden seemed to be like the only one who had a shit together. So I'd like to see a reappearance of him. I believe he's been absent the last one or two books. So uh, maybe uh, a reappearance of that. And I, I keep saying that I want to see the Forsaken get a win here. So I actually take them seriously. Uh, at this point, I'm just like, yeah, I could just have these two show up and I'd be fine. I don't even know what happened to uh, De uh, De De 
Demondred. I don't even know what happened to him. So, I mean, if my tame Momdred uh, theory, it, it, and that's not mine. I know that that's something that happened long before me. I'm just saying the theory that uh, that tame is actually uh, is actually Demondred posing as 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 Mazram Tame. If that actually comes true, let's go ahead and talk about Mazram Tame since I'm just bumbling here. Uh, I'd like to see Rand and Loghain actually finally confront Mazram Tame. I think that that's it's time for that to happen. Uh, you know, I don't think that Mazram Tame knows that they're on to him, clearly. Uh, you know, since he just sent Loghain off in the last book, yo, get, go get me some more guys to train. So I don't think they're really on to him. But uh, I feel like this is time for, you know, Rand just completely has just neglected the whole farm thing. So he's just kind of sat there and let Tame kind of build this little army right underneath his, his nose here. So I feel like he needs to either go get this shit in check or he's going to be in trouble. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to see them confront that starting with this book because Rand's just kind of been twiddling his thumbs the last few books, I think. Uh, yeah, he the, the last one he went to farm matting, and you know, it was actually kind of good stuff, but it was just like, yeah, but he's just going out on a quick revenge tour. Uh, I don't feel like he's... He doesn't have any sense of urgency here. You know, if the end of the world's on its way, I feel like the, the most important player in that should be doing something other than taking time off to go out and kill a couple of guys that try to attack him. So, uh, yeah, I'd like to see some actual plot progression with Rand because I feel like he could get really, really dangerously into that Perrin territory soon where he's just there. He's not actually doing anything. You don't want to do that with your uh, your main player coming up on uh, uh, the last battle here. Uh, let's see here. I got to talk about Elaine, right? Because I love her. Elaine is my lady. Uh... I said it, I think, the last three. Uh, I need an end of her, like, taking the throne. Just have her do it and give her something else to do. I understand you're, you're, you're lining up the chessboard here. You're getting ready for the last battle. But give her something else to do besides walking around looking for something to do. Either give her something to do or get her off of my pages. I don't need so much content of her with her not doing anything. So I feel like I would come around on my Elaine hate train if Jordan either gave her something to do or just gave her less time in the story. Like I said, uh, I was becoming annoyed with Egwene and I felt like she kind of took a step back to the point where I just became like indifferent on her. I would, I don't, I don't despise Egwene in the least. Uh, I just kind of was just eh, whatever, whatever on Egwene. I'd like to get to that point with Elaine, and I feel like her story getting a little reduced or being improved. <laughs> Could you improve her story a little bit? Uh, that would probably help me get over this whole thing. Because I don't want to dislike any of these characters. I know that the, everybody has characters they hate. And apparently everybody hates uh, Gawain. Hmm. You know, I didn't even mention Gawain in my Crossroads of Twilight review. I think he was only in the prologue. It was just Elida telling him, you know, what's up? Huh. Huh. Okay. So I guess I want to see Gawain in this. I want to find out what everybody hates about him. That just kind of came out of nowhere. And nowhere. That was uh, just in the comments. I saw someone told me that uh, there was a poll among Wheel of Time fans uh, who was the most hated character. And Gawain won apparently by a landslide. And I'm like, really? Over a queen? I'm like, well, she was up there too. But yeah, but, but Gawain was. I'm like, okay, well, shit. Can't wait to see what happens here. So uh, yeah, okay. Let's get Gawain in here so I can see what's up with that. Because it'll get some of the focus off of uh, Elaine here. And is Galad still alive? I haven't seen him in a while either. So... So many characters, you just kind of tend to forget about uh, a few of them. What else? Uh, I mentioned that I really, really liked what happened with Perrin in my Crossroads of Twilight review. Uh, I felt like it was the first time something of substance has happened to his character in a while, and it felt like a character-defining moment. Now I would like George to stick the landing. Is he actually changed? Is it just going to be more pouting about his wife, or is this leading to bigger things? I want to think that it is, you know. Did he leave more than just his axe behind? Did he leave his boohoo crying ways behind? He's going to go get his wife. He's going to end that terrible storyline. And he's going to be the man again. He's going to be Lord Perrin again. That's what I want. I want the Wolf King, baby. I want that back. I want the Perrin that I fell in love with back. And I felt like this is the first step. Just don't know if Jordan's going to do it in his final book. I don't know. I don't know. So I'd like to see some kind of growth there. Like I said, stick to landing. I see him get this Shido thing over with. And as always, that brings me to let this be the end of the Shido. Let this be the last book that they show up. 
I mean, at least we're getting less of them now. We're getting less. I'm not getting any Savannah POV chapters. Thank God. Thank God. Uh, but I feel like this 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 pending alliance with the Sanshan, if it actually does go through, that makes it seem likely that they're going to just kind of you know ally together, wipe out the Shido, and end that storyline. Uh, at least that's what I hope. I definitely uh, that is my wishiest of wishes. Uh, let's see the end of the Shido. How about a little bit? I like the what Matt and Tuan did in the last book. I'd like to see that development continue. I said I like that it's not insta love. I like that you know it's uh, they're, they're they're working towards the relationship. Uh, they both seem like they understand it's just you know it's destiny. It's going to be that way. It's been prophesized. It's going to happen. But neither one of them are like, oh well, let's just skip to the end. You know, they're actually working on it, and uh, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. However, I am ready for Matt to have a new purpose. I feel like he's kind of also just been kind of twiddling his thumbs ever since. God, what was it? Maybe right? was he even in Crown of Swords? Which one? He wasn't in Path of Daggers. That's what it was. The Ibu Dar thing. Yeah, it's over. It's over. Let's get onto a new storyline now. So uh, I'd like to see him get a new purpose. I'd like to see him going back to being the War General. I thought that was the coolest stuff with you know all the memories of the captains in his head. I'd like to see more of that, more of the uh, the Red Hand stuff like that. Give Matt. A greater purpose or you know he might just be keeping his, his his you know that bullet in his chamber for the last battle to really show what matt can do in in, in like uh games and theory and strategy and things like that uh but you know i hope he has something to do before you know that last book uh other than just uh you know wooing to um it's kind of weird i'm gonna say this how about some naive <laughs> You know, she was at the cleansing, but I mean, I felt like her, her role is kind of diminished in this these books a little bit since Crown of Swords, you know, after she, you know, found a way to, to stop her block and she's able to channel, you know, more than when she's just angry. And then she kind of, you know, she kind of fell back. I guess, you know, she got married to Lan and, you know, apparently Robert Jordan doesn't like to write Lan very much. So uh, he just kind of had naive fall back with him. Uh, I know I bring up Lan every book. Uh, I'm going to keep doing that until it happens. Because I, I have been told it does happen. I'm just hoping it happens before like the last freaking chapter of the last book. So uh, yeah, I'd like to see more of these two. Uh, I'd actually like to see them actually interact with each other a little bit. You know, earlier in the series, uh, Night Even Land, even though I felt like, like I said, it was insta-love. Uh, I, I did like where they would actually be talking. I like their conversations together. They were pretty good. You know, Light woman, you know. Because, <laughs> you know, if any of the have that woman that you just love to death but can frustrate you to no end or 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 the, the you know the husband or the, the boyfriend that does that it's the same way of it. i'm not i'm not like jordan i am balanced i am balanced in my in my gender politics here um i'll always bring up tom and loyal and i just got to the point where i feel like loyal i just don't think he's got a bigger part in the story i really don't i feel like he's just there uh same theory i had with sam Samuel in a, in, in a Song of Ice and Fire where I feel like he's the one who is writing the Song of Ice and Fire. And I feel like Loyal is just the one who is writing The Wheel of Time. That's the book that he's writing right now. Uh, so I feel like that might be his actual purpose. I still hold on that I think Tom has a bigger role in this story because it was just too much setup with his background and with his relationship with uh, Moraine than, than to just completely just abandon it just because Moraine died. Uh, I feel feel like there's more there to this character and he's gonna have a bigger part to play at least i hope i hope because i love tom and i want to see more than just his usual either cameo or babysitting or passing a message uh, i'd like to see him actually have a pivotal role in his story again hell give me a pov give me a tom pov so i can know what's going on in that head of his uh really just about the series overall man i just i'm hoping for a faster pace I don't think even people who say that the slog isn't real, I think even they can't deny that 7 through 10 had kind of a glacial pace. Uh, I loved Crown of Swords quite a bit. But yeah, it was slow. It was slow. Path of Daggers was the very epitome of slow. Uh, Winter's Heart was mostly slow. We just had a great final chapter. And 10 was really slow. Really slow. So... I just, I would like a faster pace. I would like a sense of urgency. I, I've talked about how like, yo, you guys are setting the table for, for Tarman Gaiden and, and you just, you don't seem like, it doesn't seem like anybody's in a rush here. It just seems like there's just like, there's too much sitting around doing nothing, just sitting around drinking wine and reading books. Guys, let's get on the ball here. Let's get things going. 
And everybody tells me that these last four books are just, you know, rapid. You won't be able to put them down. So that makes me think that I'm going to get this wish, that I want the series to, to speed up. It needs the shot in the arm. And, you know, if this is if this is Jordan's uh, swan song, I'd like it to be a, a fitting farewell. You know, obviously, I know he didn't finish his story, so I know he's not going to be able to tie off everything. But I feel like that, I'd like this to be the first book in a while where I get more answers than questions. And I feel like this is the perfect opportunity for it. Um, everyone tells me that this right away, just from the prologue, you can tell things are different. And you can tell things are picking, you know, business is picking up again. So, uh, yeah, just a little sense of urgency but from these characters, you know, that, they, that they're taking this shit serious. They're not just like, oh, it'll happen when it happens, and I guess we'll just show up. I need to see them getting ready, and I need to see them taking it seriously. You know, they're worried about the Sean Shan and things like that. I get it. I get it. But you guys need to keep your eye on the prize. You know, I feel like you're you're looking past your your your, your current opponent, uh, or you're looking past your final opponent because of your current opponent, and you need to be making sure that you're looking at the field as a whole. And I don't feel like they're doing that at all. So uh, some unity and some resolution to some things in some of these pointless things like the Shido, and let's just let's get let's get into the. I don't want to say when I want to say the downward slope. That sounds like like things are going downhill. Uh, I mean it like in a pace. That you, we're going downhill now. Things are moving quickly. That's what I would like to see. So I feel like I got a better chance to hit some of these wishes on this one than I did with the with the Crossroads of Twilight, which I felt like was just obligatory. People expected it, and that was the only reason I did it because I knew that it, nothing that I said in that. I don't think I got one thing wrong in there. Uh, one thing right in there, except where I said pair and do something. That might be the only one I got right. But uh, even that is kind of debated. You know, a, a lot of people are just like, I didn't think that that was as big of a moment in Crossroads of Twilight as you did. And I was like, well, you know, if Perrin was your favorite character and it was the first time he showed a pulse in four books, you might feel like he did something. So uh, that is where I'm at, guys. Uh, I mentioned in Crossroads of Twilight review that uh, I'm actually rather sad, you know, that this is the last Robert Jordan book that I'm going to read. You know, I feel like I'm, I've shared a couple million words with this man. And, uh, you know, this is going to be the last thing I read from him. It's, it's actually quite heartbreaking. I know that a lot of the stuff that Sanderson wrote is actually directly from uh, Robert Jordan's notes. I do know that the very last chapter in the very last book is apparently written by Robert Jordan. So uh, it won't be a goodbye, but it's definitely a goodbye for now, right? And it uh, it sucks. It sucks. And like I said, I know the people that stuck with this series the whole time getting to this, it just had to be de devastating, you know, that uh, when the author dies... And you think, I'm not going to get the end of my story. So um, I, I'm taking it very seriously. And I, I, I'm excited that I'm at this point now. Uh, because even though I had to I had to end up rushing the schedule, and something I said I didn't want to do was rush the series, uh, I, I feel like it's going to be easy to do because apparently this is where it gets real page turnery. And then you wouldn't want to take a break between each book like I had been doing. So that's where I'm at, guys. That's my wish list for Knife of Dreams. So please, if you want to drop in the comments and talk to me about it, please keep it to the first 10 books. Uh, when I say something like, hmm, I don't know if Shadar Haran, Haran is actually a dark one, I don't want to the answer. I don't want to know this. This is just things I'm thinking out loud. Please don't tell me. I've gotten 10 books in this series and not been spoiled about the ending. Please don't tell me. Uh, so if you want to talk spoilers, the first 10 books, Yo, go for it. I want to talk about these things in the comments, and I want to talk.